All right, damn, boy, my boy, training number 29. Okay, I see you, boy. I'm going to go ahead and slap with a like. You know, the man, the myth, the legend, the boy, the rubber. You know, I know what this is, bro. We about to get into this video, bro. Shout out. Shout out to the rubber. Also, I'm going to keep doing this every SCP video, bro. Void, whenever you're ready to take away that strike, you know, we here for it. Anywho, let's keep on. Let's let's, let's get into this and see what it's about. discretion is advised. While the batteries were launched towards the repair drone, it was destroyed by a shell launched from SCP-2399. Command lost contact with Barrier Unit 45 15 seconds after the initial discharge. Hello everybody, I'm the Rubber. Today we bring you SCP Foundation Keter Class Object SCP-2399. SCP-2399, also known as a Malfunctioning Destroyer, is a nigga what are we playing doom halo on god what is that bro it's like some warframe machinery my nigga this is not no scp bro this is a massive and complex mechanical structure that is currently located in jupiter's lower atmosphere since its visual discovery in 1963 2399 it's a psc observed heavily. <laughs> it is noted for its use of highly advanced antimatter based weaponry which it uses to create spatial disruptions and devastating atmospheric fluctuations. These events are observable as a large red vortex, commonly known as the Great Red Spot. SCP-2399 appears to be damaged, possibly due to an impact with the Jupiter's rocky moon I.O., before coming to rest in its current position. 2399 has been observed releasing multiple small octopoid repair drones in efforts to repair the damage it has taken. Some of these drones will remain near 2399, while others will patrol nearby moons, or venture out deeper into the gases of Jupiter in search of parts that 2399 is missing. Computers estimate that 2399 is at 59% completion and has been growing at a rate of 0.78% annually. Due to 2399's location and nature, physical means of containment are currently impossible. Foundation agents stationed in major observatories are to retrieve and contain footage or images of 2399. At present, false information has thus far been able to completely suppress any knowledge. Oh, so that's why we learned about the rest body. We, we, we don't really, really know what it looked like. For sure. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Pertaining to 2399 from public awareness. SCP Foundation satellites in orbit around Jupiter are to maintain constant vigilance of 2399's reconstruction efforts and make all attempts to hinder that process if 2399 reaches a minimum of 75% completion. Additionally, a perimeter of long-range electromagnetic jamming satellites known as Barrier Array have been situated in high Jupiter orbit. Any transmissions intercepted by this array are to be summarily decoded and locked. <laughs> Despite its damaged state, 2399 seems to possess a limitless power supply, along with advanced electromagnetic shielding, matter-disrupting weaponry, the ability to repair damage done to itself, and a precise tracking and targeting system. These abilities were proven when Barrier Unit 53 observed one of 2399's repair drones as it navigated closely to a piece of debris, which was quickly determined. Again, this is one of SCPs I can't really say much about. It's more like listen and learn more than is like talk and, and roast and, and commentary. I'm trying to, but I don't really know much. Like I'm, I mean, it's really straightforward. You feel me? To be part of a damaged communications array. Check out because on God, I ain't gonna lie though. specific component and the ramifications of allowing 2399 to recover it, it was ordered that Barrier Unit 45 fire upon the drone with its onboard concussion batteries. Batteries were discharged. However, the drone appeared undamaged. <coughs> Footage obtained by Barrier Unit 53 shows that while the batteries were launched towards the repair drone, it was destroyed by a shell launched from SCP-2399. Command lost contact with Barrier Unit 45 15 seconds after the initial discharge. In a later video observation, it was found that the abnormal phenomenon of 2399 led to the termination of Barrier Unit 45 by Barrier Units 44, 51, and 55. After this incident, under no circumstances were Barrier Units permitted to further engage either 2399 or drones released by 2399. 
Due to the large difference in technological advancement between the creator of 2399 and humans, 2399 is currently indestructible. In theory, 2399 might be left vulnerable by a powerful enough electromagnetic pulse. But unfortunately, this technology does not yet exist. Since 1971, SCP-2399 has been receiving an unending stream of electromagnetic-based communications from the Triangulum Galaxy, which is roughly 3 million light-years from Earth. From 1971 to 1985, <laughs> SCP-2399 continuously received a single encoded message which, through code-breaking and translation efforts, appeared to be a command to repair the damage it incurred upon entering our solar system. After this time, the barrier array was established to intercept these messages. This coincided with a period of radio silence from the origin of communications until 1996, when a different order began transmitting. The barrier array has prevented 2399 from receiving this command thus far. Below is the addendum written by the director of Barrier Project. We're here to protect those who can't protect themselves from things that they wouldn't even know to protect themselves from. We can't do it all, though. As many things as we've been able to contain, and as many things as we've been able to keep under lock that would threaten to destroy us all, there are still far too many that remain. Whether they are too big, too fast, or too powerful. Any of these things could blink and wipe humanity from existence. The fact that they haven't done so yet is just luck. SCP-2399, hmm. however, is different. We have little information regarding 239. Yo, what is the what is the what's the message, bro? 99's motives, origins, and full capabilities. We do not understand how it is capable of communicating over such large distances, or why those who constructed it, if it was in fact constructed, sent it to us in the first place. <laughs> we do not know Yo. what would happen if 2399 becomes successful in fully repairing itself, or if part of our array would break down enough to allow a message to get through. We do not know this, so we must assume the worst. Judging by what we have seen, were 2399 to have reached Earth, it would have led to our timely destruction. Sometimes, however, humanity gets a little help. Sometimes, hmm. something steps in the way of the apocalypse. For us, and for 2399, it was Jupiter. As 2399 began to slow on its approach to Earth, a researcher saw what we've been able to ascertain, that 2399 struck Io, was damaged, and was unable to escape the gravitational pull of Jupiter. Okay. Its weapons activated as they were intended, but it was Jupiter that experienced doomsday, not us. Eventually, though, it's likely that 2399 will resume full functionality and will likely be able to pull away from Jupiter and proceed to its target. As of now, we can keep hurling bombs and EMPs at it all we want, but we have got no indication that any of it will so much as scratch the thing. In fact, much to the contrary, experience dictates it would do nothing at all. If this were to happen now, we would undoubtedly be destroyed. Jupiter has given us time. For now, 2399 will remain there, reassembling itself, while we devise some way to stop it. Like it or not, we are in an arms race with this thing. Our best guesses give us something like 25 years until it is able to hear past our dampening array. Until then, we must seize the opportunity that has been laid before us. We must use the time we have been given and not let it be wasted. So we devised Protocol Legionnaire. One gigantic EMP powered by God knows what, <laughs> followed by a volley of nukes big enough to wipe out our civilization a thousand times over. A blunt plan and simple, likely futile. Our researchers and researchers around the globe have yet to devise a way to deliver that kind of pulse, let alone a way to power it. There is no indication whatsoever that we will be able to complete Legionnaire on time, or if it will do what is intended once it is completed. But we must try. We must do something. Even if we have to drain our banks and empty our minds, we must try. 
Not often do we get a chance to see the swerving bus that will end our lives and step out of the way. Jupiter, unknowingly, has offered us that chance. I suggest we take it. SCP Foundation decided that necessary force would be authorized to destroy or incapacitate SCP-2399. Using Foundation resources, as well as resources from 45 nations, a platform of numerous warheads bearing large amount of MT payloads and several warheads bearing EMP detonators was launched and placed in orbit around Europa. A few hours later, 15 heads of state ordered the entire payload of Project Gigas to be launched towards 2399. <laughs> Sadly, the operation failed, and 2399 has not been destroyed. Efforts to develop alternative methods. Hey, bro, listen, bro, we might as well call it a day, bro. You know what I mean? 25 years, bro. I see y'all for doomsday, all right? Of eliminating 2399 are currently underway. Remember to check out my new animation channel, The Rubber Talks, where I share my life story, thoughts, and opinions. Hey, shout out to Rubber. That was fire. I, I really didn't have much to say. Like, I know some people are probably like hype and shit because they hate when I talk during the videos. You know what I mean? But, and now they hate when I pause a lot, but some people are like, dang, he didn't really talk that much. I feel bad, bro. It wasn't, wasn't really much to say. It was more like listening and learning and trying to understand it more than it was like just commenting on the thing and, and what you call it. But yeah, bro, this, this was cool, bro. Shout out to Rubber. You know what I mean?